there doesn't seem to be much wrong with this watch of yours. <laughs> it's hard to hear it, though, with all these other clocks ticking. Well, I'm awfully glad that mine's not too bad. How soon may I have it back? Why, I don't see why you can't have it tomorrow. So soon? Oh, wonderful. Well, there's very little wrong with it. Now, I've got a pencil. <clears throat> now, if you give me your name. Oh, yes, of course. It's Wesley. Mary Wesley. Mary. Mary Wesley? Are you the Mary Wesley who's always seen with Mr. Boston Blackie? Oh, yes. Blackie and I generally do run around together. That is, when he isn't running after a murderer. All right, I'll be in tomorrow. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Miss Wesley. Bye. Hiya, Dad. Oh, Walter, my boy, I didn't know you were in the shop. Yes, I was back repairing that clock of Mrs. Williamson's. Old-fashioned thing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece of work, my boy. We don't very often see clocks like that these days. No, I guess not. Say, Dad, there's another type of clock you don't see much of anymore. What kind is that, Walter? The kind with a poison needle in the winding key. Did you ever see one of them? Yes, I did. In fact, I saw one in the clock shop about two or thirty years ago. Certainly looked innocent. I guess it was supposed to. Dad... Could we make a clock like that? Could we make one? Well, Walter, that's a strange thing to ask. Not so strange, Dad. I just wondered if we could make a clock that would kill somebody. And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Great party, eh, Walter? It certainly is, Mr. Van Horn. Glad you could get away from your father's clock shop long enough to join us. Well, so am I. Dad's been keeping me so busy lately, I haven't... There you are, darling. I've been looking everywhere for you. Oh, hello, sweet. You know my wife, don't you, Walter? Sure, we've met. How's the clock business, Mr. Stone? Great. After five years in it, I finally found out what makes it tick. (laughs) (laughs) Say, speaking of clocks, where did this handsome grandfather's clock come from? Huh? Never been here before. It came this afternoon. I thought you were buying me a present. Not that I remember. I've never seen it before. (laughs) Well, maybe your wife bought it for you, Mr. Van Horn, and it costs so much that she, uh, uh, forgot to tell you about it. Now, Mr. Stone, just what do you mean? Nothing. I was just trying to be funny. Well, you know that old saying, many a truth If is... you want to speak truths, my darling husband, I have a hunch to give to you from one of your feminine friends. Dear, this is a party. Excuse me. No, no, no. don't go, Walter. I'm sorry. Now, no more quarreling, Richard. Suits me. Say, dear, get back this clock. I don't know where it came from, but it's running. Is it on time? Well, let's see. I have, um, 10.29. What time do you... Hmm, the same, and the clock says just a little after 10.29. Must be one of your clocks, Walter. Those instruments of yours never do keep time. (laughs) Well, let's not talk shop, Mr. Van Horn, especially not clock shop. I have enough of that during the day. Uh, Of course, of course you do. Let's go over and join the others for a few minutes, shall we? That's a good idea. Oh, stop! Walter! What was that? Walter! Quick, somebody, quick! Walter's been caught! This is unbelievable. Walter's been killed by that clock. Look, Rollins, I don't want to hear from you again till you've made that old clocksmith talk. Now get out of my office. Yes, sir, Inspector Faraday. And stay out. Did you get a confession from all that stone? Yes, sir. I sure will. Uh, I want anything done around here. I have to do it my... I said stay out of here, Rollins. So stay out. Sorry, Inspector. The name isn't wrong. Uh, Blackie, you stay out of here, too. What? I miss watching you make a slap out of yourself? I should say not. Uh, Blackie, beat it. I've got enough on my mind. Sure you have. The trouble with you is you haven't got enough in your mind. Oh, no? Well, what do you want? How long will it take me so I can say no? And how soon can you get out of here? I can leave now, pal, and let you alone on the Walt Stone murder. It shouldn't take you more than two or three years to solve it. Uh, well, let me tell you something. I've already found Walter Stone's killer. What do you think of that? Nothing. Of course, I don't believe it. But uh, what led to your brilliant deduction? Well, first of all, I know how young Walter Stone was killed. By a bullet. Most people who are shot usually are, Faraday. Yes, but they're not killed by a bullet fired out of a grandfather's clock. Oh, that's where the bullet came from. Yeah. When the cuckoo came out at 11 o'clock, the clock was supposed to fire a bullet. Only the cuckoo came out at 10.30. And who could rig up a clock like that? 
Old man John Stone, the dead man's father. Don't be ridiculous, Faraday. The reason I'm here is that John Stone is a nice old man. He fixed Mary's watch. I suppose that clears him, huh? And I suppose you're going to tell me a father never kills a son, huh? Sure, sure. There have been plenty of cases like that. But this one isn't. If old man Stone wanted to kill his son, he wouldn't go to all this trouble to do it. Besides, how could he know his son would be standing in front of that clock at that particular time? I don't know. You can say that about almost anything and be accurate, Faraday. Ah-ha. Uh-huh. Joke over. I suppose you know who killed Walter Stone. No. You know, Faraday, I've heard of a man killing time, but this is the first case on record where time has killed a man. <laughs> Staring at Madeline. It's Grandfather Clark, Richard. It's hard to believe. You're a little bit sorry the bullet from this clock killed young Walter Stone instead of me, aren't you? A little bit sorry. <laughs> My death would be quite advantageous to you, wouldn't it? You're putting it rather mildly. Hmm, you amuse me, my dear wife. Your death would be equally advantageous to me. Really? Should I apologize? I'm sorry, but I don't intend to die. You don't? Walter Stone didn't intend to either. Arrangements might be made in your case, too. You're not very funny. Oh, no. I don't imagine I am, do you? I'm not very funny, but I am very alive. And also very much in my way. Imagine. You know, I was just thinking the same thing about you. Association of ideas, isn't it? I wonder what either of us is going to do about it. I can't make your plans, darling. All I can make is... Now, what's the matter with the clock? What's usually the matter with the clock when it stops running? It needs winding. In that case, I'll wind it. Don't bother. Oh, but it's no bother. I rather like the sound of it. With each tick, I feel I'm coming closer to getting rid of you. The same goes for me with every tuck. You know, there's something about you that... Uh, Richard, what's the matter? Uh, Richard. Richard, stop fooling. Richard, get up. Stop that very obvious play acting. All right, lie there if you like. Well, who are you? My name is Boston Blackie. Oh, what's wrong here? Uh, Something happened to my husband. He'd like me to think. You're Mrs. Van Horn? Yes. You might see what's wrong with him, if anything. I certainly will. Ah. Well, nothing's wrong with him. Mm. Nothing that can be cured, that is. Sorry, but he's dead. Dead? I'm afraid so. What was he doing just before he fell? Why, nothing. Nothing at all. He was just winding that clock. Winding this... Uh Uh-huh. Nice going, Mrs. Van Horn. Now, suppose you tell me all about it. Tell you all about it? I, I told you all I know. He was just winding that clock and suddenly he fell. Uh-huh, but I don't fall for that story. Where's your phone? Right here on this table. Thanks. Who are you calling? I'm doing something very unusual in a situation like this. I'm calling the police. No. No, please, not the police. They'll say I killed my husband and I didn't. Huh? Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. Well, Blackie, I suppose you know by now who killed Walter Stone, huh? No, Faraday, right now I don't even know who killed Richard Van Horn. Van Horn is dead? Yes, killed by the same clock that killed Walter. But that's impossible. We took the gun out of the clock after Walter was killed. I know, but Van Horn wasn't shot, Faraday. He was winding the clock when he got it. Which means he was tagged by that old poison needle gimmick. Poison needle, huh? A fine help you are. You go up to Van Horn's to find out who killed one guy, and the best you can do is tell me somebody else has been murdered. The best I can do, Faraday, is to find out who saw to it that his two victims got the worst of it. Here's old man Stone's cell, Blackie. Thanks, Ron. You got company, Mr. Stone? Oh, I have? Yes, Mr. Stone. My name's Boston Blackie. Oh, yes, I've heard a lot about you. And, Miss Wesley, it's good of you to come to see me. Well, I asked to come, Mr. Stone, because I think maybe we can help you. Yeah, Blackie, but you and Miss Wesley are in the cell with him. I don't think there's any danger from him. Thanks. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Stone? No, Miss Wesley, I, I'm i afraid not. Okay, Blackie, you too, Miss Wesley. Go on in. Thank, Thank you, you, Ron. Ten minutes is all you can have, Blackie. I may not need that. Sit down, Mr. Stone. No, I'd, I'd rather stand... Blackie, have you found out who killed my son? No, I haven't. But he will. You must find his killer, Blackie. I'm going to do my best. But let me ask you something. Do you know anything about a poison needle in the winding apparatus of the clock that killed your son? Poison needle? No. Well, it just killed a man. 
Richard and Horn. And the police are going to think you're responsible for his death, too. No, Blackie, I swear, I swear I had nothing to do with any of this. Blackie, you'll have to be... You'll... Uh, Mr. Stone, uh, oh, uh, Captain uh, Blackie's uh, falling. Yes. Here, I've got him. Here we are. I'll put him on the cot. Oh, Blackie, is he dead? Uh, wait till I get him on the cot. Whew. Oh, there. Blackie, is he dead? No, Mary, he's not dead. Oh, good. He's out, but he just fainted. Well... I've got to get to work and start winding up the case where a man just died by winding a clock. Now back to Boston Blackie. A beautiful grandfather clock has killed two people. Walter Stone, who is suspected of putting a gun inside the timepiece and wealthy Richard Van Horn, who was killed by a poisoned needle hidden in the winding key of the clock. Faraday has arrested John Stone, Walter's father, as the killer. But Blackie feels John Stone is innocent. He has no suspect to replace him, however, though he has a slight suspicion Van Horn's wife, Madeline, was anxious to get rid of her husband. As we return to our story, Madeline Van Horn is talking to Kenneth Wells, who seems to be more than just a friend. Kenneth, darling, you're so sweet to me. <laughs> you're easy to be sweet to, Madeline. Am I? I'm glad. I was so afraid you'd go away after this awful thing happened to Richard. Go away? I should say not, darling. After what happened to poor Richard, I have all the more reason to stay around. Oh, you're terribly kind. I don't know what I'd do without you. I know what you can do with me, darling. Hmm? Marry me. Marry you? Sure, why not? What we talked about doing as soon as... As soon as... Well, now that Richard has left you, what's there to stop us? Kim, are you trying to say that you arranged my husband's death? Well, let me put it this way. It wasn't a bad job, was it? Why, you... Get out of here! Darling! I said get out of here and I meant get out! Madeline, darling, after all we... Get out of my house instant or I'll call the police. Maybe tell them about those little blackmail affairs of yours. All right, all right, but I don't know what's the matter with you. You don't, huh? Well, you'll find out if you don't stay away from me. Oh. Uh. I'd like to speak to Boston Blackie, please. Oh, well, I'm sorry, he's not here. This is Mary Wesley, though. May I do something for you? Yes, this is Madeline Van Horn. Where can I get in touch with Blackie? Well, just a minute, and I'll get to the number, Mr. Van Horn. Uh, I've got it right here on a pad somewhere. Just a second. Oh, yes, yes, here it is. Blackie is at the office of an attorney named Alexander. Your husband's attorney, I believe. You think Mrs. Van Horn murdered her husband, Blackie? No, I don't say that, Mr. Alexander. She had the opportunity, yes, but I'm looking for a motive before I go any further. You're Van Horn's lawyer, and I thought that money might be the motive for Van Horn's murder, is that it? If it's enough money, it's enough reason for murder. Well, Blackie, according to the terms of Van Horn's will, Mrs. Van Horn does inherit a good part of his fortune, but I don't... Excuse me. Sure. Hello? Mr. Alexander, this is Madeline Van Horn. Is Boston Blackie there? Yes, just a minute. Blackie, it's Mrs. Van Horn. She wants to speak to you. Really? I'll take it. Thank you. Hello, Boston Blackie. Yes? Blackie, I think I know who killed my husband. I think I do, too, but uh, let's have your thought. I think Kenneth Wells murdered him. Kenneth Wells? Who's he? He's a man who's wanted to marry me for years. He even tried to get me to divorce Richard. I see. Well, what makes you think he killed your husband? He as much as said so. Well, this is very interesting. Kenneth Wells, eh? I'll go see Kenneth. And I've got an idea that all's well that ends well. <laughs> Mr. Stone, I was on my way to see a man named Kenneth Wells, but I thought I'd drop by the jail and see how you feel now. Is that name Wells familiar to you? I feel better, but I, I, I don't know that name, Blackie. Sorry to hear that. And I'm sorry I haven't been able to find out who killed your son or Richard Van Horn either. Oh, Blackie, this is awful. And I suppose the police still think I murdered my son and Van Horn too. Probably. Look, Mr. Stone, 
Your son worked for you, didn't he? Oh, yes, he did. Well, look, I have a theory. Did he know anything about clocks? Yes, a great deal. In fact, just a few hours before the accident, my son asked me if a clock could be fixed to fire a gun or, or poison someone. Oh, he did, did he? Well, what does that mean? Hey, wait a minute. The gun that killed your son was fired when the clock said 10.30. It was a cuckoo clock, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Well, I had a cuckoo clock once, but it struck only on the hour. Is there such thing as a clock where the cuckoo comes out on the half hour, too? Yes, but they're rare. So rare your son maybe didn't know that the murder clock was one of them? It's very possible he didn't know. Possible? I think the fact that he was killed is proof he didn't know. Stone, I've got this whole thing to get out. Just after 10 o'clock, your son set the clock to fire the gun when the cuckoo came out at 11. At 10.30, he was standing in front of the clock and got the blast he meant for somebody else. You mean my son intended to kill someone else? No, I think your son was hired to rig that clock so it would kill somebody. I think the somebody who hired your son was Kenneth Wells. But, but you told me that Mr. Van Horn was killed, too, and by the clock. How could... How could that have happened? I'll tell you how. Your son was playing safe. Just in case the gun didn't work, he put the poison needle in the winding key. I see. And after the gun was fired and my son was dead, Mr. Van Horn wound the clock knowing nothing of the poison needle. Yes, your son's death was accidental and so was Van Horn's. Stone, you're a free man. I am. Well, as good as free. All I have to do is find the man who hired your son to fix that clock. Then I'll fix his wagon. Fine date this has turned out to be, Blackie. Sorry, I kept you sitting here, Mary. And I'm going to leave you soon to see a man named Wells. Oh, great, great. You invite me to snoop around the Van Horn Mansion for you. And what do I do? I sit here in this big room, having to smell this very heavy perfume. And then you come in just to say goodbye. Oh, well, keep me waiting and leave me shortly. That's Blackie. That perfume is heavy, isn't it? Sure. But listen, I had a talk with the butler... And it seems that Mrs. Van Horn isn't home. Well, I could have told you that. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Well, according to the butler, a man phoned her about two hours ago. He was obviously trying to disguise his voice. Just after she talked to him, Mrs. Van Horn left and wouldn't say where she was going. So? So, why would a caller try to disguise his voice? Because he was known here. And? And who was better known here than Mrs. Van Horn's boyfriend, Kenneth Wells? Uh-oh, I know what happens now. What? I go home like a good little girl. While you go to see Kenneth Wells about being a bad little boy. Look, Wells, you're going to sit in that chair till it's an antique unless you start talking. You've got me all wrong, Blackie. I haven't done anything to talk about. You killed Richard Van Horn. Well, I certainly am surprised to hear that. Look, this is a nice little apartment you have here. But I'm going to break it up banging you around if you don't cut out that cute talk. What are you sniffing at, the cute talk? No. Something a little more pleasant. Familiar perfume. Look, Wells, you might as well start talking. I know you hired Walter Stone to rig a clock to kill Richard Van Horn. Why would I do that? To get rid of Van Horn so his wife could inherit his fortune and then you could marry her. You hired Walter Stone to rig that clock, didn't you? No, I've never even seen this Walter Stone. You saw him at the party when he was killed, didn't you? No, I was out of town the night of the party. In fact, I was out of town a whole week before the party. Just got back in town this morning. You were? Wait a minute. Gives me an idea. Van Horn could have been the one who hired Walter Stone. He no, was... you're talking. And I think I'm making sense, too. Van Horn hired Stone to rig that clock to kill his wife. When Stone himself was killed, Van Horn thought the clock had done all the death dealing it was supposed to do. He didn't know Stone had put a poison needle in the clock, too. That's it. I bet on it. Okay, now that you've got it all figured out, will you please get out of here? Oh, no. No, you're not completely in the clear yet. What did you want with Mrs. Van Horn when you talked to her today? I didn't talk to her. I know better. You called her up a little while ago, disguised your voice so the butler wouldn't recognize it, and Mrs. Van Horn was here in this apartment with you not long before I arrived. Why don't you get out of here, Blackie? You're wasting your time. And I agree with him, Blackie. Faraday, what are you doing here? Running around after you, Blackie. Oh, I suppose you found me with a divining rod. No, with a phone call to Alexander, Van Horn's lawyer. 
He said you're on your way up here. Now I'm here to tell you to get out. Look, Faraday, with the exception of the whereabouts of Mrs. Van Horn, your case is solved. Yeah? Who solved it? Who always solves your cases? Well, I did it again. Faraday, Stone and Van Horn were killed by accident. What? Yes, by accident. And it'll be an accident if you ever understand it. I'll explain it to you later. Right now, I think you and I better go to work on Wells here and find out what he's done with Mrs. Van Horn. I tell you, I haven't even seen her. You haven't. She's been here. I know that perfume of hers anywhere. Blanky, why don't you leave this guy alone? Look, if those deaths were accidental, as you say, he's as innocent as I am. Sure, of killing Stone and Van Horn. But I have an idea. Good. good. You're leaving? Well, so am I. Hey, hey, Blanky. Look, that's not the door to the hall. I know it. It's the closet door. I'm going to start looking for Mrs. Van Horn, or at least find proof she was here. Oh, Blanky, don't be a silent. Blanky, stay away from that door. What's the matter, Wells? Are you a little... Ne- Blanky, look out! Uh-oh. Well, look what fell out of the closet. It's a woman. Dead. Who is she? She's corpse number three in our case, Faraday. But she was Mrs. Richard Van Horn. Mrs. Rich... Don't move, Wells. I've got a gun on you. You've Boy, also you got the goods you. on him, Faraday. So Wells here was as innocent as you are, huh? Okay, okay, so I made a mistake. But you just found that body by accident. You didn't know Mrs. Van Horn was here. No, didn't I? I knew Wells was lying the minute he denied she'd been here. How? How? One whiff of a perfume and I smelled a rat. Well, Blanky, I've got it. Got what, Faraday? Measles? No, you're not that lucky. I've got a confession from Kenneth Wells. You don't say. Yeah, you can look it over. Well, read it, will you? Not the first part. That's just routine. Okay, here's the place to begin. It says, I killed Mrs. Van Horn because she knew I was in town the night of her husband's death and that I had motive for killing him. Even though I didn't kill him, I knew I'd be a suspect. Mrs. Van Horn threatened to go to the police and tell them I was in town, and I couldn't let her do that. Hmm. You can read, can't you? In small words. Hmm. Oh, Wells was a cute kid, wasn't he? Says here he was afraid of Mrs. Van Horn for another reason, too. She threatened to go to the police and expose him as a blackmailer. Well, when I get them to confess, they really confess, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. But you ought to be awfully ashamed of yourself, Faraday. Hmm? You stood in Wells' apartment and said he was perfectly innocent when Mrs. Van Horn's body was only ten feet away from you. Well, I can't see through a closet door, can I? No, I guess not. It says here in this confession, I quote, I killed her in my apartment, but didn't get a chance to get rid of her body before Boston Blackie came in. Oh, all right. So you got there before me. But I would have pinned this on Kenneth Wells sooner or later. Uh, Later, of course. Faraday, I doubt whether you ever would have figured out that Richard Van Horn hired Walter Stone to rig a clock that would kill Mrs. Van Horn. No. No, and even if you did, you'd never guess that both Van Horn and Stone were killed when their plan accidentally backfired. Actually, though, you should have solved this case by yourself. Yeah? Why? Well, the first shooting was done by a cuckoo clock, and your little cuckoo. Yeah. And the second killing was done by a poison needle, and your poison to me, and have been needling me for years. Yeah. Go ahead. And Kenneth Wells did keep Mrs. Van Horn's body in a dark closet. And Faraday, old pal, you've been in the dark all your life. 